if any of y'all get me sick right now, I'm gonna be very sad. No, it's better to get sick now before than on the marathon. Yeah, like, get it out of your system. Get it in and out of your system. Be shit, better though. for me to get sick the week before all of my final exams than during the dumb thing where I drink for a week straight. Look, I want you to have your priorities in order. Yeah, for your this priorities marathon. should be the marathon. It's for the kids. What is your dumb work yeah. for? Ideally, I will one day be able to do a thing that will help the kids in a better way than raising seven thousand dollars every fifty-two weeks. Mm, yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Said you're going to end up doing web security for a startup in San Francisco. I will never move to San Francisco. No, I, you but, don't have I, to move. Never, Bill has, never, a, beautiful, have to move listen, to Bill, Bill listen, has a beautiful basement that nobody's living in listen, right now. Listen, ne never say never, but I really don't see my trajectory ever going to Try San to Francisco. Get remote, man, it's incredible. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, exactly. It's a really beautiful system where uh, they trust me and I betray that trust on a daily a daily thing. <laughs> Do you Daily want, basis. Do you do you, you do know I'm I'm testing the microphones right now, right? Yeah, yeah. I okay. Know. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm not really betraying it. It's I know. just like I I spend about an hour a day mm. just reading papers and shit. But any 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 level of of just yeah, like, like decorum break, break, or like personal the, hygiene and sanity just, just go right out the, the window. Day, breaks no, the day up into into the yeah. four. I shower more hours. when I work from home because like yeah, if I'm working at an office then i'm like well again i want to do a bunch of creative shit when i get home but then i gotta shower i gotta make dinner and stuff i'd imagine like, that. like you probably shower at home because just like you use it as like a method of procrastination like am i, I, only I can't work now i'm dirty yeah. am, I, am i the only one in the room who showers the same regardless of events going on in the day is that is that just me uh yeah. i think so I, I i shower pretty much every day that's good there was like during that stretch of time where I didn't speak to another human being for seven days, like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie, I missed a few. Okay. But then I would make up for it because what I would do is after a particularly tough meeting is I would draw a bath and then I would scream into it. <laughs> so, uh, like, it evened out overall. I'm I'm glad you you found some healthy coping mechanisms. Yeah. I just want to say, and this is not just to Matt, this is a general statement, mm -hmm. that showering is not a zero-sum game. You can't miss two days, shower three times mm. on the following day, and call it even. I That's think not the you way can. this works. No, <laughs> I, I, hard, I hard disagree. Depends how depressed you are and what exactly you're trying to accomplish with those yeah. showers. And what you're trying to avoid. Yeah, exactly. Right? If like, you if you had a rough day and you need to go cry in the shower, then you can definitely do that three or four times a day. Yeah. Like okay. Norris, you can only wash off the physical. Right. Yeah. Just remember that. I, I remember this every day. <laughs> are are y'all ready to start? I think the audio levels of are course. good. I, I'll bet. We're not including that. Now I gotta no, get we are. Too bad. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Now it's I gotta there. get up it. and grab the drinks. Okay. Uh, All right. right. We'll do a hard mm. cut. Well, we'll introduce you, and then you can get up and go and do that, and then we'll go from there. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Super Hopped Up, your favorite podcast about coping mechanisms. I am your host, Chris Norris Jones. Uh, about to stand up is one Mr. Kelly Wright. <laughs> I forgot what order you were talking about. Mr. Michael Parker is laying down on the recliner. Showered like right before I came here. And Mr. Matthew Emery, a uh, friend of the podcast, not here nearly enough, but hopefully here more often. Mm -hmm. How are you all doing today? Uh, I showered this morning. So I'm very proud of you. Yeah. That, that takes and some doing. Yesterday. I used to shower like twice a day because like mm. I would I would shower to wake up. That's my coffee because I don't drink coffee. Mm. And then I would shower after the gym, usually in the evening. But apparently that's really bad for you. Apparently that fucks up your natural skin essences. I, I think on like the, the scale of things that are quote unquote bad for you, taking two showers is pretty low on the list. But my skin yeah. essence, Matt. My skin right. essence. Well, like what kind of soap are you, are you using like industrial state? Like are you using like bathroom cleaner to, to clean your skin? Uh, I, I, I believe in dermabrasion, so I only have <laughs> steel wool. My okay, mm. then yeah, maybe yeah. you should stick to the, the doctor's recommended All one a day. All those microbeads that are killing every single animal on the planet. <laughs> I love how like that was just like an idea someone had. They were like, it's called microbeads, and it feels weird when you put it on your skin. Oh, by the way, we've like totally destroyed 25% like, like, of the biomass like, on the planet. It's like a trillion little pieces of plastic every yeah, time you wash a bottle your opener hair. just kind of in the kitchen. Sorry. I don't but, know where. Oh, the little man's underneath the table. What also. I would like to do is I would like to compare like morning rituals. So you said that uh, your caffeine is is a shower. Oh, man, my morning rituals have gotten so fucked up with my school semester yeah. this semester because like my classes don't start till 11:30. Oh my God. Uh, although I do work twice a week, relatively normal. So five days a week, I'm getting up around ten, ten thirty. Oh my God, dude! And and because How do you do it? Uh, and because <laughs> I'm a, because I'm a garbage person, I, I I always fall asleep around the time that wake up makes sense. 
So I'm going to bed usually around 2.33. Mm. Um, and my sleep schedule is like, I, I basically hit the snore until the last possible minute. I get up when I have maybe 15 minutes to get everything done before I need to be out the door. I shower quickly. I don't eat breakfast because mm. I'm not usually hungry in the morning, but also because eating breakfast takes time. Mm. And then I'm on the bus to school or work. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we no. what you meant? Um, so my caffeine is the pre-workout that I take. Uh, and then I go to the gym uh, and I furiously pump iron and then take a massive dump. Nice. Just okay. like, just brutal. Just soul cleansing. Because like, you know, uh, you know, you have several hours, a whole night's worth, right? But combined with, it, when you lift really heavy, and this is something uh, that uh, weightlifters know. This is a documented fact. Yeah, like, if you squat big, you're just going to want to poop, right? I thought it's, you were going to do that Arnie quote where if you, if you pump hard enough, it's like coming. Mm, yes. And, well, yeah. I mean, like there, there's a there's a there's an analogy to that where if you shit hard enough, it's kind of like it's coming. So there's mm -hmm. kind of sort of like a there's like a reduction from one Not to the, the other. Not the same coming on that out one. as going in. Yeah. Mm. For the yeah. record, for the record, <laughs> oh, boy. For, for the record, Mike's, Mike's girlfriend is sitting on the couch, kind of quietly hanging out, and I feel like that's half the reason why we're being but a bit more gross than this usual. Podcast. Yeah. And this is this is pretty much on par. See, just like. Hearing it in slightly better audio quality than she normally does. No. Fuck you, our audio quality is good. <laughs> Sounds better than real life. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we're talking Hyper about real. HD audio. My a Put a jacket into your 7.1 surround sound system. Just get that rumble <laughs> on. There was a time when I was doing this in something like four channel stereo. We where used to use we, we your... had different audios on different sides uh, of the headphones. We used to yeah. run everything. It was stupid. Yeah. We used to run everything through your roommate's uh, iMac. Not their iMac, his like MacBook. At one point during like yeah, because for the, the first year and a half of this podcast, the only way I knew how to work anything was getting it through GarageBand, and nice. even then, I didn't know how to actually edit in GarageBand. So I would take the MP3 out, put it into the MP3 into Audacity, and then edit that in a single channel. It was bad, folks. <clears throat> My nice. coffee is coffee. Yeah, nice. I I get up about ten minutes before I have to leave for work, put mm. on my clothes, and then. Usually walk to work now, oh. but mostly take the bus. Then I get a large coffee. Look at me. Drink that. I have a lunch. job. Wait, so you have a coffee, then a large coffee? No, I have a coffee when I get to work. Yeah. Mm. And then at lunchtime, I have another coffee. Is, is, are those coffees free? Uh, no. We Write it a, into your contract. We're, okay. we're a startup. Although you, the last month what? has been good because McDonald's has $1 coffees. It, every every startup, startup that I've been a part of, well, yeah. <laughs> every startup I've been a part of, uh, every organization that I've been a part of, except for the university... Which for some reason decided to charge coffee at twenty five cents a pop, which is a fucking travesty. That's worse than making you. Free... That's worse than making you get your own coffee, in my mind. Yeah, no, that because uh, like mm. if you if you have to go and get your own coffee, that's at least it's like ah, oh, we don't have a coffee machine. If they're just like buck a glass, then they they actively hate you as a worker. Right. But what is well, that? I mean, yeah. Why that... do they want to stop you from getting that go juice? Because I don't know. What does that say about us? I don't know. It says uh, that you need a Keurig or something. I'm just saying, yeah. company can afford a Keurig. Uh, Although those are also killing the planet. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't go. I hate those micropod things. It's just like, I see these things and I see like somebody squeeze out like half a cup of coffee and then like a pound of plastic. Just, I don't know, man. Okay, get a coffee pot, I yeah, guess. Is... Get, get a, oh, yeah. So that I can segue then to mine is like, it changed my life uh, getting a coffee maker that has a, has a, an auto brew on it like mm. a timer on it. So I set the timer for 10 minutes before I need to get up. Like I wake up, uh, my alarm rings, wait, uh, walk to the thing, fresh, a full pot of coffee, and then just keep slamming it back until it does its thing. Mm. Go to the bathroom and then I'm out of there. Like this is, this is a weird thing to be jealous about. I don't drink coffee cause I don't like the taste. I never really became an adult. But something I am legit jealous about is one of those side effects of coffee is that it makes you shit real regular. Oh, yeah. And it mm. becomes the main effect after a while. And not mm. a lot of people talk about that. Like, it starts, it starts like, oh, yeah, well, this will help me wake up. And then it gets to a point where, like, yeah, I kind of need this so that I can poo before <laughs> I leave the house. As mm. someone who has low-key digestive issues, every time I have to go to the bathroom, it's kind of like opening the wrong door in some sort of, like, like, like three door prize mm. cut type game show the game. Monty Hall. Oh, yeah. It's it's like it's always like the worst possible Monty Hall scenario. It's just like, all right, well, I drank a glass of water and now I have to die. Or, mm. well, now I ate a banana and three hours later the the clock runs over and now I'm gonna. What you should do yeah, is have the host eliminate one door, yeah, and then that's it right. becomes. Then you always pick the 
different door than you selected, and it's a higher chance that it'll be the right one. Mm-hmm. I have also gone through an introductory stats course, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, my, like, working from home life is way better. I usually wake up, I'll have a coffee, have a daily meeting, and then I usually, like, work out throughout the day. I'll do mm-hmm. that, like, Pomodoro thing. Nice, yeah. And I'll use the time that I'm taking a break to work out. So I'm usually a healthy lad. It's just the last, like, but year and a half that I, I have I always been. thought of Pomodoro as a type of a spaghetti sauce. What's Pomodoro? Ooh, oh man! Oh Matt! Here, Matt showed us. Here's the a fucking fruit. productivity tip. It's the only way that I can stay sane, man. Uh, basically, <sighs> you just set a timer for 25 minutes. Oh, you've been telling me to do this, and I should do this. You should do it. I tried it, but then my breaks would just be like half an hour. Mm. Like it's it's hard to, it's hard to keep those breaks at a reasonable. Mine time. like screams at me if I take a uh, gets, break too long. Gets you real good at jerking off in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, now you're just to trying. Now you're just trying to fit those in. <laughs> yeah. See the, the we were, pro- you guys are come on that's not much worse than what you guys are already talking about the intro to this podcast is terrible yeah it's a great intro it's one of my we favorites. talked about audio quality and shitting yeah one of my favorite intros the, I used the, to use that five minutes just to check tweets and then I'm like wait I'm angrier now <laughs> than I was <laughs> at the end of uh, my work I should have just worked through it the the problem for me and it, it's not as if like I procrastinate too much when I'm working it's that if I want to work on something like I'm kind of just on it. Like, I have, I have sat and I have worked on, say, a math assignment or a coding problem for probably five, six hours straight without really stopping. Other the than best like part bathrooms. is you're probably not getting too much done near it's, the end of that. It's just that's the problem is that, like, there becomes a certain point where, like, if I get stuck on something, I, I, I know instinctively the right answer is to get up for a half hour and go run on a treadmill or something and then come back with a fresh eye. It doesn't but, even like, need to be that. It's just, like, go for, like, a walk around, like, the hallway or something. Like, yeah, just like, take some sort of the, mental... The logical part of me knows that's the right decision, but there's always that lizard stem brain, which is just like, no, motherfucker, you're going to sit here and you're going to slam your skull against this until it or you dies. And usually it's me. All right. Well, I, I used to do that. Like, that used to be my undergrad. Yeah. And then I started doing this, and I realized I could do pretty much, I would say I almost doubled my work capacity, and I am more, normally way less stressed. Like, if I did not do this Pomodoro shit for the last couple of weeks... By the way, guys, uh, I wasn't here because I was, like, doing a fuckload of work for the company I work for. Anyway, if uh, I didn't have that, like, I don't know what would have happened. But I probably wouldn't have gotten it all done. So, something to consider. Uh, there's a productivity tip. Okay. That's the, that's the productivity corner of the podcast. Yeah. Now we move on to the beer portion oh of the podcast. Oh, my God. So, it was my goat today. It actually is, is not bad. Oh, I... Wanted to get uh, something sweeter because I was I didn't want to do like a dark beer like I usually do. You wanted to get something sweeter, and so what you got did the, you get? So I got you a, got the sourest thing on the menu. Well, yeah, it's like something crisp, I guess, not like dark and brooding. This like I usually isn't as sour though, is it? Like I don't know if this is sour enough to be a sour. The, the word tart is on the label. So the, yeah, this is a cranberry ale by Trading Post Brewing. I actually don't know if I've heard of Trading Post. They're Local, they're out of Langley. Yeah, I've heard of them. I've, I don't know if I've had anything of theirs, but it was like, I was looking and there's like really dark winter ales and stuff like that. And I was like, ah, I feel like going something, whatever the tart, sour, refreshing, whatever mouth crispness you, word you want to use for it. And I was excited for like juice, basically. Mm. But this is, um, I mean, you guys, some of you seem to like it. I, I think This is actually not that far I, off from cranberry juice. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, I, I like this, but... I, if you were to blind, if you were to give me one of them blind taste tests and have me take this, I don't know if I would call this beer. I don't even think it's blush. beer, but yeah, I think Matt's right. I think I like this just because I really like cranberry juice. Oh, you're one of those guys too. Like uh, I, I don't know what it is, but I will drink just like dude, I raw ass. I love cranberry juice. juice. Yeah, yeah no every, sugar. This is dope. Oh yeah, this, I I hate the sugared kind, man. But the just straight cranberry juice. House with like, all these UTIs. Yeah, this tastes like stale cranberry juice, though. Well, fermented no, cranberry it, juice because that's essentially what this is right now. Yeah. Uh, what is the uh? Can you hit me with the uh, ABV per- percent there? Uh, it's so dark. Um, five point nine. Five point nine. Really? It is a strong. Beer. I would have thought this would be like low fours. It's deceptive. It's seven IBUs. That, that tastes that's, about right. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, not, it's not bitter that's, at all, but it is. what's the, the sourness units? I, I, don't, I don't think that's a thing. Unit. Yeah. Oh, that's just made up. I think sour is a quantitative. Here, let's see what they... qualitative measurement. Let's, 
Uh, the Pucker Index from the Warheads Institute. Captain James Cooper, a Hudson Bay Company employee involved in the cranberry trade, fell out of favor with HBC after he was caught trading Is cranberries that not the dude under the from, table. From Titanfall 2? Maybe. The wheat ale is <laughs> kettle soured with lactobacillus. That's a Lactobacillus That's a is vampire. A, is yep. a bact okay, you know, it's a vampire, you're and right. And features a medium malt body with a bold tart cranberry flavor. So that's basically what this tastes like. Lactobacillus is usually the thing they add into beers to give it sort of like to put it into the sour category. It's oh. the one they yeah, it's it's in the oh, bacteria the, that ferments yogurt. I meant the top part. It tastes like treason. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, I like the idea of a man getting in trouble with the law because he's illegally trading cranberries. That's yeah. like like no one kind of wins. The like, cranberry racket? Not yeah. even like alcoholic cranberries. He's just like... You do know no fruits are naturally alcoholic, right? No, I mean like not al like You know what I mean. He wasn't like brewing alcohol drinks and then putting it, like selling it under the table. He was selling cranberries under the table. Yeah. His, his product wasn't even cool. Yeah, definitely. it was the oh, lamest yes, the great one. cranberry prohibition of 1772. I don't know. I'm sure there was a racket in it. It's like what happened. What was it in Quebec two or three years ago when there was a maple syrup heist and they stole hundreds of thousands of dollars of maple syrup and no one knew that was a thing, but apparently it totally you can steal and then sell under the table hundreds of Shit's thousands of dollars of maple dog. syrup. Yeah, that I like the idea of a maple syrup heist. That would. That would be the kind of thing I would want to get into if I were to choose the life of crime, you hypothetically speaking. You know what's oh, really white collar, like a hundred percent. Like, yeah. well, are you insane? <laughs> like, uh, you get a bunch of money and then no one catches you, and you don't go to jail even if you do it's, get caught. It's awesome. Yeah. It's it's the you perfect. Put your crime. name on a fucking opera house somewhere. Insider trading's good too. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's a white that collar. is white that, collar. Yeah, collar. That's yeah. a subset of that, white that, collar. That's that's your gateway white collar crime. It's like I think. general embezzlement. Yeah. You know? Like, maybe put it into a charity. Especially if you're a programmer. Like, put in some, like, monthly f payment to what looks like a hosting service or something like that, but mm. it's actually an account that you own. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yep. hierarchy, yeah, it probably starts at insider trading and then laundering and then tax... Then tax. Is tax havens a crime or is that a thing that we just don't... No, it's just something that, no, like, it's you, just... you have a bad feeling, you know, in, in your gut. When, uh, when you yeah. do it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna compare this to the only thing I understand, which is video games. So you, oh. know, you you know how like people who are a higher level than you in video games have cooler powers? It's basically the same thing in real life, except replace the idea of power with with like fiscal ability. And basically, if you are a person who has a certain level of money, you can make it so you don't gotta pay taxes anymore. You that's, can also have women pee on you in a hotel. That's unsubstantiated. I mean, it's <coughs> true that you can. <laughs> Unclear as to whether or not it happened with the person I'm referencing. Mm. Also, you know what's really weird? After you mentioned that this just tastes like cranberry juice, I like mentally shifted my expectations, mm. and now it's really good because yeah, it tastes just like great. cranberry juice. It's the power of positive thinking. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, this is a bad beer, but it's a good <laughs> juice. Great so fermented sour. juice. <laughs> <laughs> so tart. Yeah, I bought three because I thought I would like it, and now I think I do. Nice. There you go. Good yeah, actually, this was one of my favorites. So I mean, anyone wants to pour more. I've had a lot, we've had a lot worse on this show, Kelly, so... I might, I might steal another taste if you're offering after. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, Alright, so Matt, I want to start with you because it's been a little while since you've been here and I miss miss your sweet dulcet tones. Oh. oh. Uh, we'll start with the thing we nominally talk about on this podcast. You've been playing any video games? No. Good. That's actually what I want to hear. I mean, what do you want to talk about? I, I mean, like life do... is a video game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I, I've watched a lot of, like, really great movies recently. Uh, Old, new, mix them new, both. New, new. Uh, I have recommendations to make. Oh, so did you see Justice League too? Uh, no, <laughs> I didn't actually. Uh, I skipped Justice League, and then, uh, I think the same day you guys went to Justice League, uh, I saw Lady Bird. Oh. I keep is... getting ads saying it's the highest rated movie of all time, and that kind of puts me off on I it. I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't say it's the highest rated movie of all time. According to Rotten Tomatoes. I'm not uh, every reviewer on Rotten Tomatoes, but I liked it. Uh, it's very sweet. I think that you would like it, actually. What is it about? Uh, it's about this girl, uh, and she is growing up. And Ooh. she goes to Catholic school. Does does and that girl happen to be the future wife of one uh, uh, LBJ, uh, former president? No. no. Okay. Is it the dog of Hank Hill? Yes. Oh, <laughs> nailed it. That's yeah. where I knew it from. I did hear it's really good, though, and it, I, yeah, all the trailers it, look pretty it's, sweet. It's nice. Uh, I don't know. I guess watch the trailer, and you've, if you think it's funny at all, then yeah, it, it continues to be pretty funny. It's a, it's a comedy? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, Greta Gerwig is the director. First time. Uh, she also did. Um, I know that name. Francis I don't know why. Ha. She she's been in a lot of those known Bombach movies that I hate, uh, like Greenberg and shit. You uh, keep saying names of things that I know of, but I haven't actually <sighs> like actively fucked with. Uh, yeah, like I guess No Bombach is uh kind of like adjacent to Wes Anderson. We've heard of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this and, is true, and he. You like kicking and screaming, right? Oh, the the ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's actually low low key. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. He, he's that guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I do not care for him. He is tart, like a cranberry. I I worry that if I were to watch that movie now, I would probably find it a little trite and kind of annoying. But when I saw it when I was twenty two and terrified of the idea of leaving school and going into the real world, it hit perfectly well. Yeah, I kind of want to watch it. I haven't seen it. Maybe Good if night. you I, shift your flavor palette, it'll taste better. Absolutely. It's all yeah, about that, our perspective, that, kids. Okay, just like sidebar, this keeps on happening to me. So before I knew all, about all the like Woody Allen shit, uh, like I would keep on watching these Woody Allen movies and going like, "What the fuck is wrong oh, with me?" Oh yeah, because like this sucks. <laughs> all of these movies that people are saying are great, they just suck, mm -hmm. right? And then like I ended up seeing a Woody Allen movie that I actually liked, and I just realized all the other ones are just bad. <laughs> Uh, so he not, might be a bad director. <coughs> yeah, he might not be very good at it. Uh, uh, he, the the only Woody Allen movie I've seen is Midnight in Paris. That's that's Woody Allen, yeah, right? It Owen could, Wilson. Uh, he, he it can and, uh, go eat my dick. Yeah, it's is, it's, uh, what it's, it's it kind of do. fucking insufferable. I could see how if you were twee, maybe the tweeness of it would really uh, would get to you. But I'm a, what if all these authors that you've heard of uh, were in a room together and talking? in the stereotypical way that you would expect them to. It would be a magical evening. Right. That's basically how I feel any time I go to, like, a programmer's conference. Mm. I'm like, these people are all the programmers that I hate mm. talking <laughs> about things I don't care about. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So I, I have another recommendation to make. Okay. Uh, good Time? You guys heard about Good Time? No. Uh, so here, here's the log line. Good Time. Uh, that's actually a good movie. Is that the official? That's uh, uh, that's that my official that's slogan? my review. It's good oh. time. Uh, you're gonna have a good time with this one, folks. Good. Uh, uh, I get, right, I right, get right. it. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, Robert shop. Pattinson like mm -hmm. of uh, Twilight <laughs> fame. Uh, he does a heist with his mentally disabled brother, and the mentally disabled brother gets caught, and he has to go break him out of the hospital. Uh, and it's all shot over one night, huh. and uh, he just does some very bad things. There's a lot of uh, acid involved, and uh, it's just like a cool fucking movie. That actually all sounds all right. Yeah, and uh, I know Tricks Point never does a soundtrack, so okay, there's a lot that of sounds like pretty big, okay. Either, it's basically a movie for me. Mm -hmm. That's uh, all about that. All right, one last one. Sorry, guys, just uh, want to get all this off my chest. Bang them out. Uh, three billboards uh, out of Ebbing, Missouri. The long ass. Oh, title? that's the whole title. Yeah, three billboards in Ebbing, Missouri. I think. When 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 you discuss films, it makes me realize that I have no idea what's going on in it's films all right. these Don't days. worry about it. This is just the stuff that I like to do. I you only, like video games. I only watch movies like I only know about movies that I see trailers for, and like because of the stuff that I watch on YouTube, it's like only Marvel and DC <laughs> yeah. movie I mean, trailers have you that heard I see now. About Justice League, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, this this is the thing. It's like I knew I wasn't gonna like Justice League, and I said, okay, let's let's watch some other movies instead. It's not about liking the movie it's about enjoying the time with each other it's about and hating like, yourself which i didn't even really. enjoy that see, you see guys that, weren't good enough co company to make that a good experience i, I used to buy into that idea right <laughs> but here's the thing you spend almost all of it completely silent right yeah, and then if you're how me I prefer my friends right and you come out of the movie and everyone goes oh that was all right and then you're me and i then the you that is me goes Actually, I think it was a really bad movie that I didn't like <laughs> at all. And everyone goes, eh, I guess. And then I go, well, I feel kind of bad. Because oh, now I'm just like making the, the experience worse for everyone else. This is what happened for us. We watched the movie in, in silence with the occasional laughing or weird cringing. Yep. Then got out, discussed how bad the movie was. Yep. And then everyone else left. And I had drinks with another one of my friends. Oh, well, that's not so bad. This is why I, I believe truly and wholly that the movie theater kind of sucks. 
And I think movies are better watched when you can have like five or six friends around it. Uh, uh, Mystery Science 3000 style. Usually watching seven <laughs> or eight of the same film series in the same day, mm. getting progressively one more right drunk. After the other. One be, right yeah. after the other. Uh, I also, I, I like the, the, the movie, I like flipping the convention and going movie and dinner. Mm. Because mm. when you, if yeah. it's dinner and a movie, it's like, okay, cool. We saw a thing. All right. Later, everybody. Like this works with both dates and with friends. Because either way, when you have movie and dinner, then like if it is a good movie, like if you're people who aren't us and you like try to see good movies, you can talk about that good movie that you saw. Yeah, mm. and especially then for a good a date, night because like it's it's basically like all right, we don't have any common ground yet. Hey, hello, nice to meet you. Let's sit in silence for well, a bit. I don't. I, I I really don't think you should ever have a movie as a first date. I think that's a I'm oh, in the same camp as Mike. Terrible, I am, I'm hard I, anti first date. You guys film. need to do it good. Should, should I should I talk about my first date experience with uh, Jenna? Uh, if, yeah. you, if you if you feel I, so inclined. Have you though? I mean, have you had a first date with like, her? Well, well it, was, think, it was like, on the old podcast. I feel like we've heard like at some point in our subconscious we know this story, but yeah. refresh us. So actually, the fact that I did movie then dinner is probably the reason why we're still together, because okay. the movie that we watched is called Amore. Which is love. Oh, it's beautiful. That's a that's a bit of a that's bold, a, bit of a, that's bold a, bit of a move. chance. Yeah, that's yeah. a bold move for the first date film. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, what if I told you that Amor is about a woman who gets Alzheimer's and then her husband goes slowly crazy and then kills her? Nice. That's uh, I, that's also, the whole movie. The whole movie <laughs> is her going like, "I don't know who you are" in French, and then him like just killing her with a pillow. Right? <laughs> Did the resulting dinner like just come down to you saying I probably wouldn't do that to you? Yeah. Did okay. you did you see this in theaters or was it yes, like we we saw this in theaters? It's just a long night of that movie <laughs> and then Matt going, I can totally see his side of things. Yeah. And then yeah, and then they and now now they're in love. I think I said, uh it's cool that that's our best option. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Fucking yeah, rad. uh definitely do the dinner afterwards. Mm -hmm. Uh if you wanna talk about it. If it's going to be a shitty movie and you're just going to talk about how shitty it is, maybe do the dinner beforehand. I've had no. a date where we planned to do a, a movie and then dinner, but somehow we were so poorly connected that we just agreed to not go on the dinner afterwards. Like in the movie theater, you're like, like coming out of the theater. We were like, we, uh, and we, neither of us wanted to have dinner with the other person and we just left. I remember that I, one of the first dates I ever had when I was a teenager, I ended up watching, uh, there was like an Exorcist prequel with this girl. Okay. Okay. And a I, horror movie choice too. Right. Yeah. And then like, uh, I didn't realize that she was not into it. And then I kept on like, like playfully like poking her and shit during scary parts. <laughs> and then she was like, you know what? I think we're through. And I'm like, fair enough. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good, good enough. Good enough. <laughs> Listen, if she can't put up with you intentionally scaring her during scary movies, I feel like the relationship probably wouldn't work. If you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my teenage years. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't know the difference between those that, two. That's the, that, that the best years joke. of my life. Uh, that, 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 that's a joke there, Kelly. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I want to talk about those three billboards. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Let's, like let's get back on the track. All right. Sorry, I'm being a bit of a hog here, but... Uh, you know, it's it's fine, been I got a while. nothing to talk about. We, we, haven't, right. we haven't talked to you in a while, man. Oh, okay, it's, good cool, to hear, cool. it's good to hear your voice. So, uh, three billboards... Is a movie that actually one of my friends, uh, one of his girl, not one of his girlfriends, his girlfriend walked out of the movie. Nice. Uh, so the the whole plot of it is there's this old woman played by uh, Francis Mc uh, Francis McDormand. She was the she was the uh, cop in Fargo, and she buys three billboards out of this town, and they just say like, uh, basically that her daughter was raped and murdered. And the police have done nothing about it. So the entire movie is the cops going, uh, we want you to take down the billboards. And then she says, no, I will not take out the, take down those billboards. Uh, she kicks some kids in the nuts. Nice. Uh, it's a comedy. I'm not sure if I made that clear. It's a comedy. No, it definitely didn't sound like a comedy. Yeah. Uh, it is great. It's, like, uh, it's very difficult to incorporate comedy when you open with, like, it's about somebody who had a rape happen. Right, yeah, <laughs> you, exactly. you, could, you could probably argue it's a dark comedy at that point. It is, a, it is a dark comedy. Sam Rockwell is in it. He plays, uh... There's a great scene in that movie where uh, she's being interrogated by the police, and uh, she essentially, like, accuses 
because like in the town, there's just one like really shitty cop. He accuses uh, this man of this cop of torturing black people, and he says, "No, no, no, they're called persons of color." <laughs> and, and they go back and forth on that a little bit, and that that is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful scene. That's that's a good, that's a good line. Yeah, it's a good line. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am done, except I have a TV recommendation. Oh, baby. I, no one seems to be talking about the show, uh, which is really weird because I love it. I think I mentioned this like in the the WhatsApp group. Hit uh, me, hit me, boy. The Deuce, which is just the wire but with cum. Oh I've, yeah, you were telling me about this. Is that the porn one? Yes. Yeah, I've heard of that. It's fantastic. It is so good, and like I have not heard of anyone else talking about this. I had not heard anyone discuss the deuce as a tv show yeah uh until you told us on I mean, whatsapp yeah. i frequent a lot of television related subreddits because of the other podcast oh uh, yes so i've heard a lot about it i just haven't oh, okay are, it. are they saying nice things yeah everyone okay, seems cool. to love it yeah it's uh it hasn't been canceled yet so i'm not interested in it so. yeah yeah that's true that's once true. it gets canceled after its first season i'm good what if i told you that in the first episode uh they spray maggie gyllenhaal with uh, some mushroom soup. What that... if I told you that I only watched that scene? Oh, okay. Well, uh, so you already know uh, about the gross. movie. Gross. Yeah, okay. Y'all gross. Yeah. Uh, but it's great. Uh, there's more to it than just uh, some weird sex stuff. There's actually a lot of depth there. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, Are you convincing us or yourself? Well, you know. He just uh, watches it for the plot. Yeah. He really hits the back walls of the... Uh, <laughs> Of society, yeah. uh, I could go on, the but real, uh, I, I hear it's like got it. a lot of really good climaxes. Yeah, yeah, you real, know? real pog of a show. It's mm -hmm. Real thought, and it's a uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't. There's something I find really fascinating about like 1970s pimp culture, like just everything about it, and like why do they dress up like that? <laughs> why I, I do they like, talk like that? I feel like you're definitely not the only one. I feel like there was uh, there was a time when you were you were seeing that sort of. Big pimp. Uh, yeah, like that, like some facsimile of 1970s pimp culture kind of all over the place in the early aughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there were a lot of movies, or at least like homages to movies set in that time. I, I also feel I like... I that Chappelle show. I was good. actually just going to say, I feel like a lot of that is because Chappelle show was really popular with white youths. And so they all <laughs> of a sudden decided that they wanted to know more about... It was mm -hmm. our bridge. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I got possibly a movie recommendation for you. Hell yeah. My most cultured thing I did this month. Uh, are you into campy samurai movies? Yeah. Uh, I would recommend watching Blade of the Immortal. Cool. I would uh, write that down. It was playing at the Rio here, so I went and watched it. Oh, um, was that during like the Grindhouse uh, yeah, marathon? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. It, I was uh, supposed it's, to go to that. It's the director's 100th movie. Oh, fuck. Is that... um The guy who did Itchy the Killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. He's got some great ones. It's so good. Yeah. I would recommend watching it. Okay. It's, it's real campy. Uh, and over the top and amazing. I, I would also recommend from that director Takashi Miike, I believe is oh, his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah that so was good. Uh, that's uh, Thirteen Assassins, which yeah. is just like Seven Samurai, only there are thirteen of them. Are his and movies, there's way more blood. I'm assuming they're they're subtitled. Yeah, yes. in English. I would also recommend, though I haven't seen it yet, the uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney movie that he did. Oh fuck! Are you mm. fucking kidding me? Which is apparently very good. That. Yeah, I want to watch that. According to who, Kelly? <laughs> Several reliable sources. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's. Uh... I mean, he's no UA Ball, so maybe it's a good movie. He yeah, also I'm, does. I'm, I'm trying to think of if there's like an American equivalent to like what that guy does because he like basically only does pulp shit. He's but kind people of like, love him. He's kind of like Quentin Tarantino, I would say. Yeah, only Quentin Tarantino makes one movie every like 15 yeah, years, was, and this guy like makes three a year. I yeah. was hearing, so, like, I, so I forget what it's called, but Quentin Tarantino's new movie, um, I heard an ad saying like it's his ninth movie or it's something. only his ninth movie? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, maybe, maybe and he I said he's going to stop after and then, But then I was something? thinking about it, like I was thinking really hard, and I can only think of eight movies that he's done before. And I think I've seen all of them except for the Kill Bills, and not, not no specific reason. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you never seen them. the Kill Bills? No, I've never seen either of them. And like, it's not like I am actively trying not to. I just Unless have never gotten around to it. Hell of a movie. Unless some may argue, and I don't necessarily believe this, but some argue that those are the best. Yeah, I know. I've heard that. No, like you, you wouldn't be alone. Like if you did think that, you wouldn't be alone. Like I've heard that from multiple. I don't know. I'll, I'll give them a watch. I think they're both on Netflix. I. If, unless he's got something more obscure than Jackie Brown, I think I've seen all of his movies. I don't think so. 
I haven't like, seen Jackie I, Brown. That's it's I pretty good. Yeah, right. Part of what is it? Four rooms or something like that. That's the one where they talk about how like Tom Cruise is gay in uh, Top Gun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I've seen that. Maybe I've only seen that because he he's been doing a lot of uh, YouTube content now. Weird. Oh, really? Where he like talk. He discusses um, filmmaking. Like I fucking love like hearing him talk about movies. Like I, I just like it. Like I don't agree with him on like a lot of stuff. You should definitely go check out his YouTube channel because he just discusses like his yeah. favorite horror movies, the different movies of like a bunch of different directors and stuff like that. It's, it's like him and Scorsese are just like really, really intelligent about talking about films. Actually, I wouldn't say he's intelligent. He's entertaining. That's that's the thing. Is like he'll he'll say shit like. Oh, the newsroom is my favorite TV show I've ever seen. <laughs> or uh, I remember looking at one of his top ten lists, and like all of these movies that I had seen that were on that list were like, these are fucking awful movies. Too. <laughs> I say this as someone who has liked every Tarantino film I see. It doesn't surprise me in the least having Tarantino come out and be just like, I like garbage movies. Like that actually, that seems like it works in my brain for some well, reason. Oh, yeah. He he might be one of those people that can like really do a good job of like seeing something. Like seeing seeing something that he wants to draw influence from, and managing to like extract like what like if there's anything good from it, like being able to extract that and incorporate that into his own ideas. The man takes schlocky ideas and makes surprisingly good films out of them. Mm -hmm. So I guess that makes sense. And like to this day, like I I I can't think of a director that does better like better at like creating individual scenes that create more tension than than what he does. Pretty good. Also, he really likes feet. Yeah. 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 He likes feet so much, I'm only waiting until he is the next one that gets outed as some sort of fucking Protection monster. Feet. Yeah. Feet pride. Also, a more AAA recommendation, but y'all should definitely watch Thor if you haven't. I was like I, I, overly I, I, surprised by how yeah, good it was. It was is very, very good. Have you watched that guy's other, other movies? Uh, he did What They Do in the Dark, didn't he? What They Do in the Shadows. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, I saw that. I, I loved it. Yeah. And it's, I didn't expect it to have that much flavor in Thor when I went and watched it. It was really surprising. Man. It's yeah. not any of the other Marvel movies. Yeah. It's real. It's like a really over the top Flash Gordon homosexual romp through the sp space time. And oh, I loved my it. God. I wish I was okay. watching it right now. Sorry, boys. <laughs> That's okay. I understand. Yeah. I, I, I take that as a good sign. I, I, I hope that. The people who are steering the ship at Marvel know that if they want this to keep potable on a long term basis, they need to keep giving weird directors a chance to take like a pretty heavy uh, license and run with it. Well, they fucked up uh, with the Ant Man stuff, right? Where they had Edgar White right on it. Mm. Uh, and then. I liked it more than some of the other ones because it was like supposed to be like a heist movie. I yeah. kind of like I fucking I liked Ant Man. I don't know. Like, if, I, oh I, I walked God. in thinking I wasn't gonna like it, and I was I was like, yeah, all right, it's fine. If I'm, not, get, I'm not a like, I'm not a nuanced watcher. If they would have had but, Guy Ritchie do Ant Man. Oh God! Like <laughs> it would have been a completely different that I that shrinking special. Do you effect think that Guy Ritchie has a good movie left in him? I. I think Guy Ritchie has plenty of good films left in them if they if he can't find anyone with a budget to give him money. Like I want him to go back to ska films when it was just like him and a couple other people scrounging together a couple hundred thousand dollars to make a, a shitty heist film. I want that again. A ska film? Ska film was like the production company that uh like that was like the, oh, that, that, I they, thought he was mm, I thought at some point he had no, made this like is, a No, this is not some sort riot. of term I just made. No, mm. like ska film was his first like production company back when he made uh, Lockstock and How much Smoke do you want to watch a Guy Ritchie Ska inspired like, documentary. Uh, not at all. Surprisingly <laughs> little, actually. Like, zero. I, absolute, absolute zero. I think as soon as I think as soon as people start buying into Guy Ritchie's own bullshit and they start giving him a budget, he makes bad films. I am scared to rewatch like Snatch and Lockstock because I watched I'm, Lockstock relatively recently. Like I, I, I was bringing Cat through like movies I really like, and we watched mm -hmm. Lockstock. I want to say a month ago. I mean, it's not. It wasn't as revelatory as it was when I was fifteen. But because it's still so, pretty fun. Because it's so simple, I think it ages pretty well. Like it, it's mm. it's not trying to be super topical about what it is. And like, like and maybe it's because of this was just like the version I downloaded or whatever. But like it, like it looked like everything kind of had a bit of like a mayonnaise smear on it. Like everything yeah, I looked like it, soft coloring and mm, stuff like that. Like yeah, it, that was, no, I think, it looked I think that, fucking rad. I, I think loved that it. was just like it because I remember thinking that when I first. It was one of the first movies I watched when I first got Netflix and like. Back when Canadian Netflix had like eight things on it, and mm. Lockstock was one of them. And I'm like, oh man, Norris told me this. He liked this one. I'll give it a watch. And yeah, I remember like it. It did have that kind of like very 
like almost monochrome aesthetic to it. Mm-hmm. But it was it was good. Or you watched like Boondock Saints. This was a while ago. How does that hold up? It doesn't. It is really bad. <laughs> uh, everyone was I right. I, I could have called it that. Is, it is a really fucking terrible movie. I don't know what teenage me was thinking. Probably just like, oh, I wish everything was dead. Kind, yeah, like, you watch that when you're 17 and you don't know what you want to rebel against, but you want to rebel against something, and that movie kind of... It, it, Catalyzes it, it, it's, that. It's the kind of movie that uh, the gang from It's Always Sunny would make. Yeah, actually. Oh. Which, have you seen... like? Because we've talked about this before on either this podcast or the last podcast, but the thing about uh, Boondock Saints is that it actually created a much better documentary, which oh, is just yeah. the documentary... Uh, what's it called? Do you remember? Uh, it's like Last Call After Midnight or something, something like that. Something stupid, yeah. If anyone wants to look that up, that'd be great. But it's basically the documentary of the director who sold that script and directed it, and he was supposed to be the new IT director in Hollywood, but he was such an abhorrent asshole of a human being that he burnt every single fucking bridge along the way and nice. like couldn't like couldn't get a job anywhere in Hollywood. It was it's it's great. He had to basically like self fund the second the sequel to Boondock Saints and it tanked and it just like it it it, it ends in this sort of expectation the guy is going to fucking kill himself in all honesty. It's pretty bad. Actually the best thing to come out of Boondock Saints Saints is that those characters are playable in Broforce. Nice. Gross. That's it. Gross. Um, overnight is what it's called. That's what it's called. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's 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 try to talk about video <clears throat> games. I guess. All right, Mike. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have very little to contribute in the video game discussion, so we can move it along to Kelly. I just been uh brushing up on my Metal Gear Hot Strats uh, in preparation for the marathon, which we're a little more than two weeks away from. But we can talk a little bit more about that later. Fuck, Kelly. So I know every time I've described Warframe. In the back of your mind, you guys are thinking, yeah, but does it have a big open area that I can play in with a bunch of my friends? And for the longest time, the answer was no. And for the longest time, everyone was really missing out on that feature of a kind of MMO-style game. But fear not, The Plains of Eidolon has come out a completely free expansion for an already very free game that introduces a very open area that you can hang out with people and get quests and go on missions and basically do MMO stuff. So they built a hub? No, they already had a hub. They built a... They built a giant field arena? you can kill things you in. You can fish, Norris. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. the only thing Time. that any ever should be in any game. Because that that's what was, was stopping me from, All from right. playing Warframe. Well, All right, when did gentlemen? Warframe come out? Was it like uh, 2004 or something? hundred years ago when the <laughs> PS4 was introduced into modern society. Like 2014, 2013? I think it actually came up before the PS4 because it was on PS- PC for a while. All right, gentlemen, hot contest. All three of you are, are now contestants. Name me one game that had good fishing in it. Deadly Premonition. Name one game. Persona 4. Name one game that had Animal good Crossing. fishing in it. Yeah, right, yeah. Animal Crossing's not bad. Pokemon? Pokemon. Uh. Does that count? That's not a. That's not a fishing. That's it just... has the most rewarding fishing. I'll tell you that. Bass fishing for the SNES. Have you seen that fucking speed run? <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I have. It's insane. It's so good. It's like five minutes long, and he's just like throwing like <laughs> the the rod with like perfect precision. And shit. Oh, it's so good. So tell me, Norris, name a game with bad fishing mechanics. Um. Legend of Zelda had fishing and it was great. Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time had bad fishing. Nier Automata has bad fishing. That's not true. Nier Automata has bad Justin fishing. Justin McElroy was bad at it. The fishing itself is good. Fishing what bad. A, so I've been hearing a lot about Final Fantasy 15 recently. It's, got, it's, it's like it's fishing. like 20 bucks now or something, yeah. which is pretty sweet. Looks like it's got bad fishing. What in the it. fuck is that game? Maybe you don't like fishing mechanics. Well, fishing mechanics from, are the most purest form of art. I think that it's literally what it is, as someone who's never played, Kelly, you've played. 15, haven't yeah. you? So yeah. So Norris. No, I, I, I oh, own never mind, it. He didn't. I've owned it for almost a year. Haven't opened yeah, it I, yet. Yeah, I finished Fuck. it. Uh, I, I, it's an all, it's an all boy, it's an all male cast of the popular video game series Final Fantasy. Yeah. And that's about all you need to know. Like, it's just a final, it's like it's, a game where you gotta like beat Bahamut or something. The like, game is <laughs> only done now. It's been out for two years and this is the time you should buy it because mm. there's like more mechanics than there ever were. I am not that's going good. to buy it. I want Speaking more mechanics. Speaking of mechanics though, there's a new uh, DLC out for Crusader Kings. Of course oh, there is. Like, yeah. wait, you, are they never going to make Crusader Kings 3? Is that just off the table? I can't Probably, imagine it would be like, ever on I guess they don't point. need to. They're really straining now. Like, they're all the way to China. 
that's this one. Is all that. the way. All the way to China. Why didn't they start there? They well, they started in Europe. Oh, okay. And then they've slowly been adding more and more places to it. But so, is, have they have they uh, brought back the start date at any point from? Yeah, when... it's it's like it's so close that there's issues because they don't want to get to like the founding of Islam because they can't depict Muhammad. <clears throat> Like, that's how close they are. They're at, like, 780. Mm. Yeah. Can't they just skip over him? Uh, kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah that, that he, kind of that, He was that a fairly influential a character, yeah. from what I have heard. Yeah. Why don't they just go back, then? Go back? Like, like well, way, way back to, like, that time that... Roman that, times? That guy got his rib taken to make a, mm. a woman. Yeah. Well, because then when you get to the time when Muhammad like pops out, then Same you still got You still got to figure that one out. Yeah, but yeah. that's like ten years from now. Yeah, that's true. No, it's just interesting. They uh, they don't give him a portrait. They just give him like a little tapestry. Oh, cool. Yeah, mm. oh, that almost makes sense. Just keep doing that. Just like instead yeah. of having it be his face, just have it no, be like the, the I, like the Islamic crescent or whatever it is. I guess like I don't want to delve too deep into like matters that I don't know how well we can tactfully discuss. That's all like, we do here, Mike. But, uh, okay, so what type of stance, it, like, because, <clears throat> as far as I know, like, I know there's like a backlash with like Western media, like, about the whole, like, not wanting to be afraid of doing that because they don't like that whole idea that... So you want to take the Charlie Hebdo stance to this, I, don't you? I, like, look, I'm not a real content creator where you're just content digesters. Uh, mm. I don't really want to be responsible for, for anything like that, but I guess, I don't know, like, I guess what would Paradox's stance be on that whole sort of issue of... Uh, I, I think they're, they're generally just like... They... Look. So on the one hand, uh, Muslims were OP... <laughs> just way OP. In game or, or IRL? It, both. both. At that time period, way OP. It had all the great tech, right? Huge spanning empire. Uh, great succession loss, right? Uh, and that's true of the game as well. On the other hand, uh, on their forums, they have to constantly be writing, hey, don't write any fan fiction about ethnic cleansing. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, basically the only people who play Crusader Kings in, in those games for a significant period of time... Are the emotionally devoid... Yeah, it's either people who are, like, so far left that, like, it's it's only space communism, right? <laughs> or, like, so far right that it's, like, we're looking at, like, we don't want a fourth Reich, we want, like, a fifth one, <laughs> right? Because uh, what unites, this is horseshoe theory, the, what unites both of them is they have a lot of fucking time on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> and they fight I, about it on, guess, on like, their forums. I guess, like, I don't know, like, like, to me, it seems like are do do contemporary Muslims care about Muhammad being depicted? I feel like and it, how what's the Venn diagram of people who care about Muhammad being depicted and people who play Crusader Kings? For any uh, enough for any content creator, I feel like if you have even like a sense of heart, it's just kind of easier to put a tapestry instead of. Muhammad. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was pretty smart. I just mi mentioned this as a minor detail. It's like, this was one of the things that they were discussing was, they brought it back to I think the start of the reign of Charlemagne, which was like 17, oh, not seven, 17, that 7, dick. 50 something. Uh, and they were like, we're not going to go any further back, because we don't want to have to model like all this nomadic tribe stuff. And then also people were saying, oh, it's also because you don't want to make Muhammad a playable character. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I mean, like, at, at the end of the day, it's like a large group of people are like, hey, can you not do this thing, please? It's so much yeah, easier. Yeah, it really doesn't just, affect anyone at all. Just like, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. And then keep making tons of money on like, Crusader like, Kings, I imagine. It, it's so minor because, because he's not a playable character, you actually have to go back through the family tree to even see, like, where Muhammad would be. Oh, nice. Right. So, yeah. um, really a minor thing. And that's not, this was, like, 15 expansions ago. <laughs> Oh, okay. uh, but no one cares anymore. Yeah, no, we're we're talking about China. We're talking about, we're talking about Crusader Kings so Someone will always care about something. Oh, definitely crazy. Yeah, you know, someone probably just modded. In oh yeah, their no, sure. version of Muhammad. Sure. Yeah, just yeah, except, except it's it's the Charlie Hebdo cartoon of Muhammad. Yeah, exactly. That's that's so much. That, that is a hundred percent real. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. Uh, other than that, other than Warframe, that somehow led into Crusader Kings. It always does with Matt. Um, yeah. Sorry. I've been so Dave and I have recorded quite a bit of the surge. It's almost time to start releasing that. Nice. And I realized that 
uh, cause I wanted to start playing through so I could practice and stuff on like a different account. And I started realizing like how much I was missing of that. Like, I don't know how many of you have played through Dark Souls for a first time in your life before. Uh, at least once, possibly. But like, y you always feel kind of lost for a while and you're like stumbling around. And mm -hmm. then your second playthrough, you like look up some stuff and you like pay attention more and you're like, oh man, I was so stupid back then. I'm already to that point at the surge where I'm like, wow, there are just fundamental game mechanics that I was missing for the longest time. Yeah, man. There are like... Uh, weapon upgrades i should have been doing they're doing there's like uh armor combos i should have been doing there's like areas that i completely missed so i'm really excited to hop back on and record myself calling myself an idiot mm. well i mean i feel like when it comes to people going through let's plays of games there's there's one of two maybe three camps where it's it's a first look kind of thing where the person playing is giving their first impressions and they're generally an idiot and they're probably not going to make the good decisions and then you watch someone who knows what the fuck they're doing and then they're they're running clinics and they're they're showing yeah. this stuff and there's a subsect of that which is just like speed running shit which is just like oh god they've solved the game and that's like people usually watch those things for different reasons there's oh. also my mm. favorite one which is the coaching run playthroughs mm. where the person at the at the helm has never played before mm. but they've got somebody next to them who's played it a lot and like it's always this fun balance of like how much do i tell them oh they haven't gotten to this bit i gotta let them run into this trap and stuff like that but right. it's also yeah. like you you tell them what you tell them what to do but they you don't tell them what's going to happen when they do yeah or like they'll ask a question and like if it's mm. not fundamental to the surprise or something you let them know like i, I like the kind of hand holding one i think that's like a good balance for lps and um we had none of that so dave and i are mm. like wait what the fuck's going on what's that who's that who's these so i'm excited for people to watch that and nice. i hope it's enjoyable i'm sure it'll be good yeah yeah be... but i really like yeah. that game and i'm looking forward to us being done and then i can play through it as nice. it's it's going into my like pool of new blood souls games that i can play over and over again uh, fuck all right wrong with that nothing like I'm, I'm glad you found things you like I, that's just like an instinctual thing like i don't like soul like souls is my chill out game like it's it's weird but like i <laughs> it's your mind sweeper <laughs> yeah like if i get stressed out i'll pop open bloodborne and start a new character and i'll just like see how far i can get before i calm down or something like that it's i just... think uh dark souls was really good for stopping me from smoking weed every day oh nice because i didn't i couldn't like focus while you're exactly <laughs> like you cannot play that game inhibited or like uh, inebriated in like, a way. It'll, it will be a bad time. You're like absolutely. how many kings? There's four kings. No, I uh, can't deal with that, man. No, man, we got. Yeah, I'm tripping out. One king's enough for me, thanks. Yeah, this plot is hard enough to follow as it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I can I tell all y'all about I'm, a game that I'm looking at the thing you're about to talk about, Zen. I kind of want you to talk about it. Can so. I tell all y'all about a game that probably would be a lot of fun while high? Because it's a lot of fun even when you're not high. Because mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun just in general. So last week was my birthday, <laughs> and I got some gift Happy cards. Birthday. Plus some thank you. Plus some gift cards that I kind of had lying around, and so I, I I bundled them all together, and I went to the Best Buy. And I said, take these gift cards and this amount of money and give me a Nintendo Switch, please. Just turn this into a Switch. Yeah. I can, can we do, do a quick sidebar? Of course. Sorry. Best Buy, what the fuck happened? Uh, Are you go into a Best Buy now and it is like all smart home shit. That's probably the what sells, I guess. But does it? Like... I, like, I guess it's because we don't know anyone who has enough money to spend yeah, on like, smart home shit. In right? Vancouver, like, who, who are these people who own a house that right. are... That are <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, and can se afford, se quote, se unquote, se light bulbs. Being, Sentence end there. Who are these people who can afford the so, so what I am saying is that if you are a person who you know owns a number of properties in Vancouver and they're all on Airbnb and you have some traveler coming in from a different continent and you want them to have a good time, you probably want everything to look like a techno-futuristic wonderland. So... Mm -hmm. Probably if you're an Airbnb person, you want everything all fucking best buyable fancy. I always get like the shittiest Airbnb, so it's always like a bear socket, like a uh, light nice. bulb with nice. a, no, like a fucking no cartoon. cover on it. You yeah, bring exactly. your own light bulbs. Yeah. Ours cost extra. So what did you buy, Norris? Yeah, I bought a Nintendo Switch and then I got Mario Odyssey with it. And, um. Are you his one up girl? Uh, I, I want to be. Okay. Mm. I want to be you been so a, bad. Have you been a T Rex yet? Yeah, that actually happens pretty early. This game, fuck. This game is one of those things where I don't have this very often anymore because age has made me cold and cynical, but you ever had one of those video games where you're enjoying playing it so much you're holding off peeing? Yeah. Yeah, that's usually my barometer for like a really good video game, and I just, I'd say I'm doing that with a Switch until I'm realizing I can put it, I can, I can hook the handles into it and then bring it with me You don't the need bathroom. to choose. 
Hell yeah, yeah. You can yeah. sit down this and game, pee. I love modern this technology. Game is, this game is good enough to have that problem, but smart enough to solve it at the same time. Good enough to shit with. Yeah. I. This Damn game, it, that's the name of my new podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, like, I... I got a busy week with school, so I can't play all that much of it. But that being said, I like I started playing it last night at like 1130 after doing a bunch of homework stuff. And I'm like, I'll play it for like an hour and then go to bed. I looked up. It was 330. And the only reason why I didn't keep playing is because I was just like, I got to work tomorrow. I got to wake up in four and a half hours. I should actually turn this off. But you are planning on bringing it on the bus with to school with you, right? I think. I can't yeah. do it. I yeah, thought about it. Dude, I, I, seen, yeah, like I, I would when fucking, I, I'd be fucking lying to you guys if I didn't say, like, I can probably put this in the back. I've seen people on the, bus. on the train, like, playing that game. Yeah, I, I've, I've played a fair bit of it mobile, uh, <coughs> and it works just great. Uh, it's, it's... You can probably play while you're uh, running on a treadmill as well. I thought about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Not specifically the treadmill, but, like, a recumbent bike, just going and down biking for a half hour while playing. Yeah, I've thought about these things, too. I'm there. So I... it's not as in interesting as the Switch, but I've been doing... All of the things that I just described to you are things that I've been doing with Metal Gear Mobiles so that I can practice for the marathon. So nice. That's good the times. only reason I had those on, on top deck to bring to you. Damn. I, like, I... I, I I don't usually get roped into novelty, and this is a Switch conversation for a sec, but the, the things that like the Switch can do, sort of like the, the home console to mobile thing, I feel like it works really well. I feel like there's something really just kind of neat about that moment where you're playing with the little like kind of two side controllers on Mario Odyssey and you gotta go to the bathroom, so you click them in and you bring it up, and like that just kind of feels really nice in a very way that seems specifically Nintendo when it comes to video games. Yeah, it's a fun console. I've been playing it at one of my friends' place, and it's like... like Arms was really fun to play. We played one two switch and like it's basically like the Wii U sports stuff, but modern, I guess. Did yeah. You have like a a rooftop party. Yeah. Your we, sexy we, friends. We hung out with all of our millennial sweet cool friends. Yeah. And I was playing at a table while Home they were working at and their stuff. startups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like like with any Nintendo product, this thing is gonna live and die on if there are enough good games on it. We got Skyrim. Fuck yeah! That like everybody's got Skyrim. <laughs> Skyrim is the new Doom. I, I I don't have any interest in playing Skyrim, but part of me is kind of excited at the fact that things like Doom and Skyrim are on the Switch because it seems like that means third party developers are interested in trying to get some stuff on it. Um, but it already has two really good games in in Breath of the Wild and also now Odyssey. And like I. I'm not going to get a chance to have you guys really play this, so it's going to be a little bit one-sided when it comes to the game of the uh, like game of the year talk stuff. But this is probably going to be like top three, top five for me. Mario is one of those games where it just it feels fun every step of the yeah, way. And Nintendo's bringing the thunder this year. Every like... every moment you're doing something, even if you seem to have a goal like oh I got to get to the top of this mountain and get a moon or whatever it is, you're going to stop like eight times along the way and oh there's a door and you go in. And all of a sudden you're doing an eight bit adventure or you come back and it's oh what's that glowy thing over there and you go and all of a sudden you're like mind controlling some onion thing and doing a bunch of weird obstacle course shit and just like that just keeps happening over and over I feel again like we because we came in here early to watch you play a little bit i feel like we must have been here for like not a super exciting moment because you were climbing the inside of a building and it was i liked it i mean it looked like yeah, a mario game to that me that actually that actually felt like one of the less interesting moments yeah but that's even that was still all right like it ended in a boss battle and the that boss, boss battle was, was kind of cool. cool yeah the weird humans freaked me out Mm -hmm. The weird humans are normal. It's Mario that's weird. Yeah, we we all need to remember that. The formal acknowledgement that no, Mario is not human. <laughs> Apparently, according to Nintendo, Mario is a human, but that I, all humans okay. are different. Then him it, and then what, what's his girl girlfriend's name from Donkey Kong? Pauline. Pauline. Him and Pauline evolved in a very different direction. Then okay, well, this is how shame. it is. <laughs> We're going after like Who Framed Roger Rabbit rules here, right? Where you can have. <laughs> Humans living together with cartoon characters, right? But it's unnatural. It yeah. shouldn't be happening. But right. is Mario a human or a cartoon? He doesn't a have nipples. I think he's a cartoon. That's what I'm saying. In this uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit world, right? He would be a cartoon man. Listen. Which allows him to be both a man and a cartoon. We've seen Beach Body Mario. He does not have nipples. That stands... That... that Oh no, I'm I've been running around as Boxer Mario for at least half the time I'm playing this game. He's got some he's she's straight up got nips. Does They're, he? Yeah, I thought he had no hair. I thought he didn't. Oh no, he's hairless. He's like he's like a baby. Mm. He's he, not Maybe like there's the a hair, hair I was thinking of. But then, no below the neck. So he's not Italian, because I've seen my grandpa <laughs> I've seen my grandpa shirtless. <laughs> I mean he's probably Italian, no, but he he is. Is. what I'm saying is that he pays the Which, esthetician I a think, fair wage. Oh no, I think he's 
I think he's a racial stereotype. I think he's just playing no, that he's, role. No, he tried to break those racial stereotypes. He showed up as a plumber one day, and they're like, oh, wait, you're Italian, um, right? And he's like, oh, yes, it's a me. Would Mario's- there be a stereotype of Italians are plumbers <laughs> if Mario, like, was not a plumber? I don't think there'd be an Italian if he, stereotype Look, if he wasn't a plumber, he would own a pasta shop or some other, like, incredibly insensitive yeah. stereotype. Yeah, well, like sometimes he's a doctor too, so like I don't think we can really. Yeah, is he even a plumber him? anymore? Am I the only one that believes that the Italian plumber stereotype didn't exist until Mario? I don't think that was a thing mm-hmm. until Mario. Dude, I just mentioned this. I, I know that's what I'm. That's what okay. I'm. And I'm agreeing with you. No, okay. This is, this I, is I thought an, you were like. You're I'm not co-opting your argument. I am agreeing with your statement. I, I I'm saying that. I, I don't think that this idea of Italian plumber would be a thing unless Mario existed. See, in See, I world. thought it was due to. Because I always thought that those like menial labor tasks were assigned to the Italian immigrants who came into New York, and like that was always my image. Because way back in the day, I mean, I mean, we day. all know the swarthy Mediterranean enjoyed the trades. This is very true. This is well documented. But it's less about enjoying and more about what was available in New York to, at the time. What do you got to do to pay the bills. It was mm-hmm. the the Great Depression. You see, I think if I think if he <laughs> was more, uh, an electrician, we would be talking about how all Italians are electricians. Well, yeah, look, absolutely. Me- if he was an electrician, then there wouldn't be like warp pipes. There would be warp wires, yep. and that would just completely change the landscape there of the is game. There is kind of warp wires. fact, there are warp wires in this game. Oh, well, then he's an electrician because Mario is <laughs> branched out. He's like that. He's like Johnny Sins. He's got every profession in the book. He's a he's a Renaissance man. Mm-hmm. When did he have time to get his uh his MD? Like between having to save Princess, he went to one of those Hollywood upstairs medical colleges. Yeah, nice school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or he was a celebrity and they just gave him his degree. It's an you honorary can, MD. You can, you can buy a medical degree online. Like, it, I, I can show you some websites. It'll take you like a hundred bucks in like also, a half hour. You just need to find a good enough printer. Also, he pretty much just gave pills to people. I think you can just be a drug yeah, dealer. Yeah, I think he just, he, well, he, he contributed to the problem of antibiotic resistance because mm-hmm. uh, he would just throw pills at, at, at microbes until they died. Mm-hmm. Also, he was a street cleaner at some point. They just strapped a water pump to his back and he had to clean up paint. Yeah, that's true. So he well, gets that was, around. That was his. That was his like probationary period because he was actually he was in prison on Delfino Island. He he, he got framed to be fair, but he did wrong. That mm. makes sense. <clears throat> but I think he stole that thing. Mm. I think he was just sitting around next to someone's house, and Mario picked it up. And he's like, "Well, I guess I own this now." It's Finders Keepers what Lost. Mario game. Legit? I mean, yeah, I don't. Overmatch. Maybe if this conversation takes more than like thirty seconds, we can just abandon it. Which Mario game has like the most heavy story to it? Like. Probably those Mario and Luigi. Oh yeah, 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 I guess yeah. I'm just, I just, I realized that right after I said it, but yeah, the Mario and Luigi. There you go. It's under thirty. Super Mario RPG. Uh, Smithy tries to blow up the planet. Mario stops him. That 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 shit gets real. That sword destroys everyone's ability to make wishes. I mean, the seven year door. I think he like buries the hatchet with Bowser, which isn't necessarily dark, but it's pretty much like fundamental to human existence. Bowser's inside story. They're on the same side, which is yeah. That happens in like every fourth game. I, I feel Luigi's matching. He's kidnapped by scary. No, that's ghosts. not a real. That's and not Luigi even. That's to... not a Mario game, though. Ooh. Yeah, let Luigi have Ooh, it. Ooh, yeah. I don't. Mm. Luigi's Mansion is a mainline Mario game. Ooh, Super Smash Bros. They're being controlled by a giant hand to fight each other, even mm-hmm. if they're friends. He has to beat up his brother. Yeah, it's, it's some sort of gladiatorial. Uh, yeah, death it's just match. a kid with a toy box. Yeah. Yeah. Mario Odyssey is fucking great. I, right. I I really enjoy it. I I hope you all get the chance to play it at some point in time. Maybe once I'm done with it, we'll figure something out. Um, I it it makes me it makes me feel like I'm playing Super Mario World again in that same kind of gleeful childishness that I don't really get anymore. Which I think is like maybe the best thing I can say about a video game these days. I don't know. It's good, folks. It's pretty good. Great. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm, me too. In fact. Actually, no, I'm pissed off because I can't play it until fucking, like, basically after the marathon because the next month of my life is going to be a fucking nightmare. I mean, we just spent an hour where you could have been playing it. Yeah, I know. I've mm-hmm. been thinking about that as you well. You don't have to be present. You can just, like, phone it in while you're playing Mario. Just just make sure the audio is not clipping you have and that then you guys can talk. while we're podcasting, actually. Yeah. Yeah, <sighs> play it at the marathon. No, I can't do that. That's a bad idea. Anything else you guys want to talk about? We should wrap this up. Uh, I mean, we brought it up so much. You should probably talk about the marathon. <coughs> well, let's use your closing, <coughs> see, closing remark kind of thing. But we can just jump right in. Fine, whatever. Hell, you take the reins. You started this. Uh, so <laughs> come December sixteenth at ten a.m. That's the the good one. The real the real ten a.m. That's what? Pacific Standard Time for 
those of us who don't speak facetiousness. That's what I said, the real one. <laughs> uh, a bunch of us are going to be starting to play every single Metal, Metal Gear Solid game that has ever existed, including the one on a Nokia that I have to play, uh, all for raising money for Child's Play, which is an organization that gives money to kids in hospitals so that they can have games and play them while they're sick, which everyone knows brings happiness to your life and not dread and sorrow like work and, and real life. Like everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go to twitch.tv uh, slash Metal Gear Marathon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can check you out weren't, our, You weren't sure about yeah. that one, yeah. but well, you, you stuck the got landing. Got a, well, look, got a few usernames. You can, hit, you can hit all the, you can hit up all the, um, all the links at metalgearmarathon.com. Yeah. And s donate to the kids and we'll torture ourselves for your money and there's going to be a bunch of really cool prizes that you can win. How, how much money would I have to pay to get you guys to play Metal Slug instead? I, I, I'm at this point like, I, I, I want to incorporate that into the next the next year's like we should have all games that have metal I mean, and gear in I them. I mentioned your joke aside, I mentioned to Norris that technically Meryl from uh Metal Gear Solid series is in police knots. Mm. So we should play that because it's canon. And it's not even just like, oh, she looks like her. It's hey, I used to be in Foxhound, then I got cryogenically frozen, <laughs> and now I'm in space. This is a horrible idea. <laughs> This is this is not a Kojima verse type thing. Oh, maybe it actually is. Who I mean, I it doesn't have to be a Kojima verse. It's a Metal Gear Solid game because Meryl's there. Are you playing both the NES games? Uh, or both the sequels? Well, there's only one NES game technically. We're playing uh, Metal Gear and Metal Gear Two, which are both uh, originally for the MSX. And then right. I am playing Metal Gear Two: Snake's Revenge, the fake Konami <laughs> released, but not like Kojima released sequel to Metal Gear. That's really, really, really bad. Sucked to watch that. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's great. It, it, oh, you, man, that must have been awful for you to, uh, to watch that and not have to be there during any of it. Tell, I, me, tell I me how awful like, that was for you. watching it for about 15 minutes and then, like, chuckling to myself and, like, turning off Yeah, man, that 15, that, that 15 <laughs> minutes must have been a real, a real humdinger for yeah, you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you could have donated 100 bucks and made, made us eat a Trinidad Maruga scorpion. Kelly, <laughs> Kelly and I were saying, like, if somebody donates $100 right now, we will just stop this game. No, I didn't agree to that. That was <laughs> you guys trying. No, I, some... I was there for that, and I think I did. And then I, instead, I like found a whole bunch of like really graphic Metal Gear uh, fan fiction for you guys to read. Oh yeah, we did do that. Yeah, so I I imagine it's not going to be an exact replication of last year, but it'll be fun in its own unique, weird way. We you never know how it's going to end, but uh, logic says it will end somehow. <laughs> and if you're worried you're going to miss something, don't worry. It happens for like seven days. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're actually going to, we're, we're, every year we get, like, 3% more organized. So this year we've got, like, a table of start times for each game, and we're going to try our, our darndest to stick to it. So we will post what are the approximate times that we will be starting and finishing every game. Yeah, I've got some stuff i got to put up tonight on the website. Anyways, yeah, uh, if you are interested in the idea of seven grown men slowly killing themselves over the course of a week, you should come check it out. Um... This has been Super Hopped Up, your favorite podcast about um, self-endorsing other projects we're all working on. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, we are on Twitter. We're, we're on Twitter, the best. We are of on all iTunes and Stitcher, and you can find me our, in my Pornhub comments. Yep, mm -hmm. Matt is uh, Banana Hammock four twenty six nine. Uh, that's his his. Have you, have you seen all that shit where it's like people just like helping each other with like trigonometry homework on? That was like my that favorite. fucking rules. <laughs> Actually, like, I feel so good about it. Yeah, that's amazing. There's some really good stuff in the yeah. Pornhub comment section. God damn, that's great. I like the arc, ar armchair psychology as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, uh, our Twitter is at SuperHoppedUp. Our email is SuperHoppedUp at gmail.com. We have a website, uh, I think. Come find us. Uh, and if you want to go ahead and tell your friends about us, we'd be very, very appreciative. Also, Kelly. Yeah. We're on YouTube as well. If yeah. You look for us at Super Hopped Up because we can't get one of them vanity uh, YouTube URLs until we have 100 follows. So go follow us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I want to say by the end of the week, we'll have the beginning of our LP out. Uh, and then the plan is every other day, a new episode of that will happen. And then come into the new year, we'll have more content for you. But you can go listen to the podcast at YouTube because I know that a lot of people like to do that. Yeah, boy, you heard it here. We're dropping our hot LP this weekend. If you're mm -hmm. listening to this, not on YouTube, what are you doing? Go listen to it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Stop giving me a reason to pay those <laughs> fucking monthly server costs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Uh, yeah, that's everything. Uh, final thoughts, gentlemen. You guys keep saying LP is an album thing. I thought that was EP. Both are extended a play, and then you got your long play. Oh, yeah, long and extended. Yeah, yeah. very different. But it's really not that long. Though. They discuss it's... it in length in the Pornhub comments. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah. not that extended though when it's cold out. I, I actually was reading a book. This is going to be my closing comment. Uh, by the like the lead singer from the Talking Heads, David Byrne, and he was talking about like how technology changed music, and uh, he mentions that the original like LPs couldn't actually pick up certain instruments like tubas and shit. So a bunch of these jazz bands just dropped their tubas and chose different al uh, different uh, instruments. Fuck. So, yeah. So like Bad time to be a tubist. All, all of the like. Original like jazz recordings are not actually the recordings at all. They're ones with like entirely different like like instruments. Hmm. I guess that makes sense. You never really see a tuba player in a jazz thing. Yeah, they they used to be really common though. Interesting. Yeah, well there you go. That's my last thought. Mike, any final thoughts? You good? Nah, I got nothing. All right, all right. Okay, we'll close it off from there. See you guys all again next week. Thank you for listening. Peace out. Love your mother.